name is Eric E-R-I-C Bryant. I am a campaign manager with Kwai C and Fume for Congress. I want to make special note and for the record note that we are gathered today in a very socially distant manner and in a manner that comports with the governor's gathering requirements. There are only seven members of the Kwai C and Fume for Congress team here. The his wife, Dr. Nfume, his son, Christopher Nfume, and a few members of the team. Located in the internet and on Zoom is the broader Kwaisi Nfume for Congress team, and in a more broad spectrum is a Facebook family, and we are broadcasting live on Facebook. As has been noted, uh, I am the campaign manager. Senior advisor Larry Gibson will present Mr. Nfume Mr. Mfume will bring special remarks on this esteemed occasion, answer questions, and then uh, exit. You're asked to remain in place throughout that process and follow the guidelines of Mr. Anthony McCarthy. Without further ado, hello Facebook Live, hello family on Zoom, I present Professor Larry Gibson. It is my honor and my pleasure to present to you Tiffany's husband, my friend, the former congressman, and now our next congressman from the 7th Congressional District of Maryland, the Honorable Kwaisi Infume. Thank you very much, Professor Gibson, uh, and my thanks for many, many years of friendship, your leadership, your stewardship, and your importance to this campaign over the last seven months or so. Uh, in addition to Tiffany, my youngest son, Christopher, is, is behind me, and I want to say to Larry and uh, to Eric Bryant, our campaign manager, to all of our team members who ordinarily would be here, that you are here in spirit in this office where we have spent so many, many hours. And I thank you all now and forever for all that you have done for me and for this campaign. I'm happy to be here with Tiffany to offer words of thanks to the many voters of Maryland's seventh congressional district. As we have come to the conclusion of this special election to determine who in fact would serve out the remainder of the term of my friend of many years, the late and honorable Elijah E. Cummings. I continue to appreciate even at this hour the support of his sisters, Diane and Sharithia, in my campaign to succeed him. As I begin my remarks, I know that I would not be standing here tonight, and tonight would not be possible without God Almighty, my rock and my redeemer, the sustainer of my faith, the God who deserves all the praise, glory, and honor. And so to the larger community throughout our district and the state of Christians, Jews, and Muslims, to those who are old and young and black and white, Latino and Asian, gay and straight, inner city and suburban neighborhoods. I hold myself out to you this evening, willing and wanting to listen to you, to work with you, to build with you, to share with you, and of course to dream with all of you. And that dream is about a better day in all of our communities, where all of us who want, at the very least, the best for our children and their children, we can make progress again in a system that oftentimes does not give that back unless we are forced to make it happen. What ordinarily would have been a great 
and I'd like to think grand celebration this evening is tempered properly so by the fact that many of our citizens at this hour are struggling to fight off the terrible disease of the coronavirus. Many of them are in hospitals. Some of them are on ventilators. All of them are worried and frightened. To them, to their families, and to the families of so many others who have lost lives prematurely to this disease, I want all of you to know that from day one, all of my attention, all of my energy, and all of my focus in the United States Congress will be on using science, data, and common sense to help get our nation through this dark hour in our history. And in getting through this dark hour, we must also find a way to support those individuals and families who haven't had a paycheck in weeks, who are struggling every day to pay bills, and to those businesses that cannot operate and may not reopen. Our work in the Congress must be to make sure that doctors, nurses, health care professionals, and first responders have what they need in order to do their job. On a local level now in the state of Maryland, I look forward to working with Governor Hogan, with all of the members of our congressional delegation, with Mayor Young, County Executive Olaszewski, and County Executive Ball. Locally, as most of you know, there are real challenges day in and day out in communities all across our district. And those challenges are of extreme importance. We will not wish our way out of the situation that we are in. And so experience does matter. And in this time, we need all hands on deck. Food deserts in our inner cities, a lack of transportation to get to good paying jobs outside of the city, public school buildings in need of modernization, and public school teachers in need of support are just a few of the issues that cry out daily for our attention and our commitment. And then when you layer on to that, the gun violence, the drug wars, and a disrespect for innocent lives, it's clear to me that people are looking for leadership. And they are crying out this evening and every day for real change. I promise you that as your congressman, I will use every ability that I have to bring about that change. We here in Maryland, incidentally, are performing a national service and may not necessarily have dawned on us, but we are doing just that. We're showing the nation how during a worldwide pandemic to conduct a fair and efficient election using mailed in ballots. Now, like a regular election, it is not yet a perfect progress process, but in a national emergency, it is a necessary one. And in June, the entire state will vote again by mail. And I ask those of you who have supported us thus far to trust me and to give me your vote once more. I believe, and I want to make sure that it's clear, that every vote counts and every vote must be counted. As someone who first got elected by three votes, which is, I think, the still closest election here in the state's history, I understand how important that is. And so my many, many thanks to all the election officials, and especially to the hardworking men and women of the United States Postal Service for helping to protect our democracy by making sure that this process worked. And now finally, as someone who's lived a few years and fought a few battles, I offer a thought and a simple warning. The common experiences that have made us recognize each other as members of a community of Americans 
are unfortunately becoming less common each year. Scab labor, unbridled poverty, second-class citizenship, violent crime, hate speech, hate groups, hate radio, and hate crimes are attempting to divide our communities as never before. And so we are really challenged to stand up whenever we can and to say as loudly as we can that racism, sexism, and anti-Semitism are wrong. That black bigotry can be just as cruel and evil as white bigotry, that all bigots are wrong. That gay bashing and immigrant bashing and union bashing at the end of the day deplete us as a nation and rob us of our ability to make true and lasting change for the needy and the left out in our society. So there will be those who will counsel us this day and many days beyond this. They will tell us to be silent in this reactionary time. They will suggest that we look the other way and hope for the best. But I refuse, and I have always refused, to stand mute when opportunity is denied and justice is deferred. And I challenge all the people of this district not to stand mute also. When future generations peer back through the telescope of time and look back to the year of 2020 and this moment in the middle of this terrible pandemic, let them say about us that when it came to making a real difference in the world, that we did not waver, that we did not flinch, that we did not shirk our responsibilities to face the tough issues head on. In this time of crisis and challenge, there is also new hope. Rather, let it be said every time that in this time as Marylanders, black, white, Asian, and Latino, that we believed even more in the power of community. And so I have not given up on the American ideal or on the American possibility. And I ask my neighbors and friends not to give up also. I'm convinced that this nation still stands before the world as perhaps the last expression of a possibility of mankind devising a social order where justice is the supreme ruler and law is but its instrument, where freedom is the dominant creed and order but its principle, where equity is the common practice and fraternity the true human condition. I appreciate this opportunity. I accept this challenge before me, and I pray that God Almighty and the people of this district stand with me work with me, pray for me, and lift me to be able to do the work that I have to do for all of you. Thank you very much, and we will entertain questions at this time. My first order of business is this pandemic, and that's why I said earlier that when I go to Washington, this is the very first thing that I want to apply myself to. By using the science and the data and most of all common sense to help find a way working with the leadership or even the followership to make sure that we are able to guide our nation and our people through this. It's the largest challenge that I've ever known in my lifetime. And for me, it's where I want to apply all of my time and all of my energy as I get there. Congressman, why do you think your campaign resonated with the people of the 17th congressional district? Well, Keith, it's a tough question. I realize that you never get elected with 100% of the vote, and that there are Democrats who may not have voted for me, Republicans, and independents. But what I've tried to take to everybody is a message that is not defined by political ideology always, but defined by what we know in our hearts to be right. It doesn't mean that we're going to agree on every issue, 
but we have to find consensus. And so the notion of trying to find consensus is something that everybody can subscribe to and buy into, because if we don't have that, we never move the ball forward. So, you know, I, I'd like to think that that message resonated and that it was an important message and the message of hope and the message of commitment to fight with every breath in my body to do all that I can in the time that I have left on this earth is a pledge and commitment not only to people but to myself and to my God. I take that very seriously and I don't know that people can fake that. And maybe people understand that whether they like me or not like me or not, that that's something when it comes to feelings and when it comes to faith Talk to us about what it means to you to succeed your close friend, uh, the late Elijah Cummings, um, of course, given the fact that you were also his predecessor. So can you kind of talk a little bit about that and what it means to you to replace a, a, a good friend of yours? Well, Saturday, Mark, this past Saturday, Mark, 24 years since Elijah replaced me. And I... Both of office, along with the person I succeeded, Congressman Perrin J. Mitchell. And so it's really kind of surreal to think that uh, I've lasted this long on this earth to watch history almost repeat itself. And I know Elijah is probably looking down and smiling because you can't script something like this nor do you want to even think about it. But it came to pass and it has gotten us to this point. It is really surreal and I don't, you know, I don't know, it's not gonna probably really hit me until I take the oath of office, which I haven't taken in many, many years, uh, sit back on the floor of the Congress and look around and just be amazed at how things can be in life. And maybe that's why we call it life. You can't figure it out. So, don't know if I have much more to say than that, except to say that I'm blessed and honored to be able to go in behind Elijah Cummings. Um, I can't replace him. I mean, I don't think that individuals of that ilk are easily replaced. But I'll cut my own brand. I'll, I'll do my own thing. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. Well, I, I haven't talked to her, but in case she's listening by Facebook Live, Ms. Klasik, I want to say congratulations on a race that we both ran for many months, both leading up to the February 4th uh, election and to this election. Unfortunately, as I've learned in politics, there is only one winner in an election, and I know what it's like to be on the, the other side. So uh, my thoughts are with her, my best wishes are for her and her future, and um, I expect at some point in time I'll get a chance to say that to her. I haven't spoken to her tonight. All right. All right, folks, well, I ask that you'll stay in place, and the congressman and the party will leave, and then you are free to do what you need to do. We all work for Anthony McCarthy, don't we? <laughs> <laughs>